Welcome to Outmotor Sports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake, and this is the 2022 Ford Expedition Max. We have towed with a Ford Expedition before with this same generation of Expedition, but it was two years ago, and it was a short wheelbase model. So I wanted to see how the longer Expedition Max would do with the same trailer of mine, because I thought the 2020 Expedition that I drove that was, again, shorter, was good, but not great. I thought it could be better. I thought it could be a little more stable with a longer wheelbase. So now that we have one here in the local fleet, I said, hey, let's give it a shot and try it out. So with that, let's get into it and talk about what this 2022 Ford Expedition Max is, talk about how this one is equipped and how it could be equipped but isn't, and then we'll talk about how it actually tows my 20-foot enclosed trailer. This is the 2022 Ford Expedition. For 2022, this is not an all-new vehicle. Ford has given this car a bit of a facelift, so it has received a nose job, and it has received a little bit of a rear-end rework, just a teeny bit, and they've updated the interior again just a teeny bit. They've done all this to make it match the new F-150 that came out for 2021. So this is updated to be closer to the F-150, given they're on the same platform. Now, every 2022 Ford Expedition is powered by the same 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. That has been kind of an Expedition thing for a bunch of years at this point. But in the 2022 Expedition lineup, you've actually got two EcoBoost V6s uh, that make higher or lower amounts of power and torque. This particular truck is an Expedition XLT, which means this is one of your more basic trim levels, despite actually looking pretty nice. Uh, it's one of the more basic trims, so this is the lower power and torque variant of the 3.5. So this is 380 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, and that all flows to a standard 10-speed torque converter automatic, again, same as the F-150, and to an optional four-wheel drive system. This is part-time four-wheel drive, which means it is normally a two-wheel drive truck, and you can engage four high and four low as you please. Now, like I said, this is the extended wheelbase model, the Expedition Max, which means you get 9.1 inches more wheelbase than a shorty Expedition, a standard Expedition. So another nine inches of wheelbase, and that gives you more or less another foot of overall length. It all comes in back here. You know, you're not gonna get more leg room in the front row or anything, but the extra wheelbase is always helpful for towing. The general rule of thumb is the more wheelbase, the more stable your rig will be when you've got a bigger trailer, especially an enclosed like this one that wants to catch the wind and blow around and, you know, push the tow vehicle around a little bit. Like I said, this one is another nine inches longer. It is a 131.6 inch wheelbase, which is approaching uh, that of a lot of half ton pickup trucks if you're getting a pretty common crew cab short bed sort of pickup truck model. So this is overall length, you know, fairly similar to that sort of pickup truck. Um, these are, you know, similar to the Chevy Suburban being a Silverado that they SUV-ified. This is basically an F-150 that has been SUV-ified, uh, which is how it's been since day one. Uh, now, this particular Expedition does not have the heavy-duty tow package. So with your towing capability, this one is rated at 6,600 pounds. If you get that heavy-duty trailer tow package and retain the four-wheel drive that this truck has, you're rated at about 9,200 pounds. You get another 100 pounds out of the tow rating if you get a 4x2 truck. Uh, this trailer, thankfully, is aluminum, and with the load in there, I've adjusted some things, so I am right at that 6,600-pound mark. Normally, I'm right around 6,800 pounds, but either way, uh, everything is more or less the same as it was two years ago when I drove that silver short wheelbase Expedition. Now, the things this Expedition doesn't have because it doesn't have that heavy-duty trailer tow package couple things that are missing, the biggest one being the heavy-duty radiator. Uh, Ford follows the SAE test for trailer tow ratings, which is SAE J2807, if any of you care besides me, which probably don't. It's basically a very difficult series of tests that automakers can follow to set an, an approved uh, standardized tow rating. And it's more or less, you know, can you tow at a minimum of 45 miles an hour up a million percent grade on a 100 degree day at the Davis Dam, uh, you know, with the AC blasting, repeatedly for three hours, whatever. Um, it's a lot of hard tests. They have tests for stability and stopping and handling and reversing and all this good stuff. So to let it meet that tow rating in such high temperatures, 
Ford puts a bigger heavy duty radiator in the heavy duty trailer package with these expeditions because that gives you the extra cooling on a really hot day. Uh, today it's not actually very warm, even though it's July in Washington DC, it's also not even that humid somehow. But uh, regardless, we're not pushing the limits of this, uh, nor are we over the limits. Um, the other things that you get with that heavy duty trailer package include a built-in trailer brake controller. Uh, you get the Pro Trailer Backup Assist software and little knob that helps you back up the trailer, which if you know what you're doing, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, and then you get uh, different axle gearing with a limited slip rear end. Now, this particular Expedition Max XLT actually has the uh, limited slip rear end optioned, um, and it's got the same axle ratios optioned. So the way it's built is kind of halfway to a heavy duty trailer tote package. Uh, you're still missing the brake controller, the backup software, and the radiator. Um, now, for the sake of a brake controller, because you always want trailer brakes working when you have a trailer this heavy, uh, I use something called a Takancha Prodigy RF, which I will link to in the description below. It is a wireless trailer brake setup that goes between the tow vehicle and the trailer, gives you a little remote control, and lets you control the trailer brakes that way. Uh, super easy to set up. I love it because when I switch between vehicles, it's very easy to move uh, truck to truck. But no fear, even though this does not have a built-in trailer brake controller, we are still going to have trailer brakes operational for this. So those are the differences between the regular short wheelbase Expedition and the longer Expedition Max that we have here. Uh, that's a little bit about what you get from that heavy duty trailer tow package, which we don't have here. Uh, now let's take a quick tour of the interior to show you a couple things that are different for the 2022 model year, and then we'll get this whole thing out on the highway and see how this pulls at highway speed. All right, so let's take a look at this interior of the 2022 Ford Expedition. If you are familiar with the outgoing model uh, before they did the facelift, this will all look fairly similar, um, especially from the second row rearward. Um, but starting up front here at the dash and the steering wheel, um, steering wheel is updated, uh, just a slightly different design. I like it. I like the fact that there's some nice, big, easy to use buttons on either side. Um, you've got your cruise control and driver assistance tech right here, and then your volume and voice commands. And then here, your buttons to control your center gauge display, and then your phone and uh, previous and next track. Um, looking a little further down by your knee, you've got a headrest flippy flopper right here uh, to pop the headrest down on the back row, and then uh, your tailgate release, and then your headlight controls, your emergency or parking brake, and uh, adjustable pedals. Now, taking a look at these seats before I get in and close the door, um, these on the XLT, these are actually Active X, which Ford uses on some of their other vehicles as well. Um, this is basically like a really nice vinyl, so these are not leather, um, but this is the XLT. This is the more entry level model. Um, still plenty nice. Uh, you can have cloth or you can have Active X, and I think this is a really great alternative to something like actual leather, um, especially if you have family or you're using this for, you know, towing and hauling a lot and you're getting in and out frequently. Um, these seats, this type of material um, tends to hold up a little better over time versus leather. Uh, now this seat, the driver's seat is power adjustable with lumbar. Um, so that's pretty nice. Now let's hop in here and looking at this gauge cluster, uh, this is the more basic cluster. Again, this is um, your XLT trim. The higher trim models have the option of a full digital gauge cluster like the new F-150s do. Um, I actually prefer this layout with your actual gauges here for tack and speed. Um, frankly, I don't think Ford uses the gigantic full screen gauge cluster very well in the F-150, and I suspect it would be implemented similarly here on the uh, Expedition. So don't know uh, if I think that's necessarily worth it, but if you get a certain trim, you know, that's just something that's going to come with it. Now, looking further over here, um, again, this is your center stack. This is the smaller of your two infotainment screens. Uh, this is Sync 4. This is the updated Sync system. Um, but if you notice, this is a, I say small, this is not a small screen. It's like a 12 inch screen. But uh, looking below it, you actually have physical controls for your uh, sound right here and your dual zone climate and rear control, heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel. Um, if you get a high enough trim level, you can add on the Sync 4A 15 and a half inch screen that takes up this entire size of the bezel. And I have used it on uh, the Mustang Mach-E. Um, I've used it on the F-150. Um, the new F-150s have that as an option as well. Um, 
I don't know, again, if it's used in the best of ways necessarily, and I don't think this is a bad setup. I actually really like this. I'm a big proponent of hard buttons and, and knobs and switches to control everything without averting your eyes from the road. So you still get a nice big uh, screen here for CarPlay. It's wireless CarPlay. And um, you've got your split screen over here where you can see you know, trip information and uh, various you know, audio things like that. So uh, I think this is a very nice setup. And then looking further over here, you've got a 12 volt power socket you have an upper glove box and a lower glove box. This is not new for 2022, which is kind of nice to see it. Um, this is where your trailer brake controller would be if you, uh, if you had the built-in one. Obviously we don't, so this is where you can keep change if you still use hard money. Um, I, I tend to not. Uh, but looking down here, um, you do have a wireless charging mat and you've got two USB ports. It's nice that Ford has included both USB-A and USB-C um, to keep your phone charged and connect uh, hardwired to CarPlay or Android Auto if you want to. Looking further back, um, you've, got, you've got my iced Starbucks drink, of course. Um, dial for your shifting, which is fine. This is the button to control your locking rear differential, which is optional, but packaged on this particular vehicle. And then these plus and minus buttons control your, uh, your gears if you're in manual mode, or you can just lock out the top gear. So if you only want to use seven of the 10 gears, you can just hit the minus to get to only seven of those 10. Looking further back here, uh, this is your four wheel drive controls. So this Expedition has automatic four wheel drive. So you can put it in 4A and it will automatically engage as needed. Um, that's nice if you've got kind of a mix of weather you're driving through, but normally just leave it in too high. Um, you've got your drive mode dial, which I'll get back to in just a second. Downhill speed control and a button to turn off your parking assistance, uh, the little beepers. Uh, now with the drive mode dial, I'm gonna go back up to the gauge cluster screen because you get a lot of drive modes and you've got uh, several here based on the terrain you're using. We're gonna go all the way over, twist to the right, to go to tow haul. And what that's gonna do is optimize how the throttle is mapped for towing, and it's also gonna set up some automatic engine braking via uh, downshifts while you're braking uh, with the brake pedal. So it'll help slow everything down without relying just on the brakes of the truck and the trailer. Um, other things looking around, the interesting thing about this Expedition in the way it's optioned is it has no sunroof. Um, it is an option, the, the option that you get is a panoramic sunroof for like $1,400. Um, this one doesn't have it. And then otherwise, this one does have the uh, dual captain's chairs in the second row. And then it's got the third row, of course. Um, and then you've got some cargo space behind that, which is, of course, very nice. Uh, this third row is power folding. The second row is power releasing from the back of the tailgate. So you can drop everything all at once, nice and easy. Um, as far as price of this vehicle, this is $69,000 and change for this one. And with all that, let's talk about how this Expedition Max tows. All right, so as we get out to the highway here, um, let's talk about the basics of getting a trailer set up with the 2022 Expedition. Ford has had a pretty good grasp of all this for a while now with their software. And whether you have the heavy duty trailer package or not, um, they do a nice job with it. So when you plug the trailer in, you'll get a message that says, hey, trailer connected, is this one you've already set up or is this a new trailer? And then when you say it's a new trailer, they want to know the length and the width of the trailer. And what that does is it informs the truck software because there is a trailer blind spot monitoring uh, on this expedition. So nice if someone's hanging out in your blind spot, you can, you can tell right away. Um, I have used that on past expeditions and F-150s and it works very, very well. Um, so really appreciate the fact that they're still doing that. Now, some competitors can figure out your trailer length on their own. Uh, you don't have to input anything, but if it's a trailer that you're using all the time, it takes literally 10 seconds to plug it in uh, and, and configure it the one time and then no big deal. Now, as we're cruising on this little back road, um, I think the Expedition has always ridden well. Um, I liked the ride of the 2020 that I had unloaded um, and loaded up. I thought it was very nice, very stable, uh, very compliant without being too soft. Um, although the, the 2020 that I had was an FX4 that they offered at the time, which now they're offering the Expedition Timberline. And uh, those are kind of off-roady focused. They have different suspension set up, uh, different tires and all that. The, this XLT is on regular highway tires or uh, Toyo highway tires. And um, I think they, they ride nice. I think they're quiet for what they are. Um, but if you're trying to tow a trailer um, of a bigger trailer and you're looking for maximum stability, uh, that Timberline Expedition might be appealing 
on paper or for visual sake, but um, you're gonna get the most stability out of a highway tire and a more street focused suspension, not something that's built a little bit more to go further off road. So just a little anecdote there. All right, so let's actually talk towing towing with this Expedition Max. As we go through the toll booth here, you're going to accelerate down the on-ramp and this is something where I just love the EcoBoost. I have loved this V6 since it came out. I think it's a phenomenal option for towing because it is spunky, it is quick with the truck unloaded, and with the trailer hooked up, it just pulls like a freight train. Um, even the, the version in this that's not the high output, um, I think does a really, really nice job of everything. And that's the benefit of that twin turbo V6. It's got a lot of boost at low RPM. It can just shove you along. Yes, it will rev out to get you, you know, hustling down the highway or something or going up a hill, but it will also just kind of be unbothered at lower RPM and still pull you along if you're in a you know, slower speed acceleration sort of deal. Um, now on the highway here, we're doing 70 miles an hour, which is more or less the fastest I ever want to tow uh, with this trailer. I try to stick between 60 and 70. And uh, this feels far more stable than that short wheelbase Expedition did from a couple years ago. That extra wheelbase helps a lot. So if you're gonna be pulling a big camper or something, or you know, an enclosed car trailer like I've got, having this extra wheelbase helps a ton. If you're gonna be pulling an open car trailer, that's where you can get away with a shorter wheelbase because these big trailers are just giant sails in the wind that wanna catch the wind and blow everything around. And you either need a long wheelbase, a stiff suspension, stiff tires, um, the, the load rating of your tires actually matters a lot for stability's sake. Uh, and you know, sometimes you get all three, a lot of the times for the sake of having a, a vehicle that's decent to drive every day, you don't get all three. Um, so in this case, the wheelbase is gonna be the biggest thing that helps you out, and I think that's fine. Um, I, I think this is nice and stable um, with that brief little you know, higher speed highway run, and then getting off the highway here, applying the brakes, um, I don't love how these brakes feel with the truck unloaded. I think the pedal uh, does not have a, quite enough initial bite. And for me, it's, uh, it's just not quite what I'm looking for. I have found myself being not quite in the brakes enough to slow down a couple times and realizing that I really have to <laughs> lay into them a little harder than I wanted uh, because it just wasn't quite balanced enough. With the trailer hooked up, uh, that extra weight helping slow you down naturally, plus the trailer brakes, feels a lot better in that regard. I mentioned stability was good, but as far as ride quality, this is not wallowy. It's not too stiff. Uh, but it's not too soft. I think it's tuned very nicely. Um, there's no trickery here with air suspension or you know auto load leveling or any of that. Um, it's truly just uh, you know coil springs and uh, regular shock absorbers. No no dynamic anything. Which you know kudos to Ford. It feels nicely set up and again rides nice both in town unloaded and loaded up with the trailer. So love that. Um, other thing to mention is the steering with this Expedition. Um, I think it's a little bit light, but it's fine on the highway. I wouldn't call it unstable or too light. It's just on the lighter side. Um, with the trailer hooked up, again, it, the whole thing kind of takes on a little bit of a different aura uh, just because you've got something putting drag on the back of the car and, you know, you're... It, the steering, I don't think it firms up in tow haul mode, but it, it just feels... A little more appropriate here when you're unloaded it's a little bit light on the flip side it's nice and light at slow speeds and it combines with a steering rack that lets you turn very very tightly which means in a city for how long this is i've actually had a very easy time maneuvering it uh you know making a u-turn or, or you know getting it into a parallel parking spot something like that worth mentioning with some technology while we're cruising here uh, ford did add blue cruise to the 2022 expedition as an option so uh, Blue Cruise is their hands-off uh, driving assistant, so it is not self-driving, because there are no self-driving cars on the road. It is an advanced level two uh, driver assistance, but it is hands-free driving cruise control on pre-mapped highways. This Expedition does not have it because you cannot get it on the XLT. They, they didn't send us one of these that has Blue Cruise set up, but uh, Blue Cruise is nice. I've driven it on the Mustang Mach-E. I will link to it right up here um, because it is pretty well done. Um, this has Copilot 360, which is lane keep assist and lane centering, uh, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, uh, emergency braking, cross traffic alert, kind of your typical safety suite that everyone expects at this point. And that all works really nicely. 
All right, and that is it for this towing review of the 2022 Ford Expedition Max XLT. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. We so appreciate all that support. Uh, if you are looking to follow us elsewhere and see more shenanigans that we get into, give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at OutMotorsports. And if you would like to join a community of fellow LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, head over to OutMotorsports.com. We have both a virtual community and some in-person events going on, and we would love to have you join us. Until next time, please stay safe, be well, we'll see you again soon.